Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Phantom Post Radio Podcast. I am your host for this week, Kate, and joining me this week is Kestrel. Hello. And Kane. Hello. And DJ. Greetings. And uh, we are joining you this week. After two weeks uh, where the world proceeded to catch on fire and burn down, we're the last people standing uh, in the bunker. But not the this same. This is our goodbye podcast. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> no one will hear it. This, this is not the goodbye podcast. Not quite everything is burned down. My town has not burned down yet. I'm very surprised. Um, uh, Lancaster's been okay, too. There was a, a protest, but... Um, they did not riot and set the, the town on fire, which is probably a good thing, because if they tried to burn down Plymouth Rock, I don't think it would work anyway. Although, if that rock was flammable, it somehow would not surprise me, so. Lots of people got tear gassed here. Yeah, you have a rough where you are. Yeah, well, it's like, it's probably like half an hour from me, but yeah. Like, I live in like a residential area, so it's not like, I wasn't affected in any way. But I didn't go into the city. If I went into the city, I would be very affected. Yeah, I, I assume so. But still, you probably have the closest... I'm guessing, I mean, Kestra doesn't say anything, but I'm sure you're the closest proximity to any of the type of rioting we've seen on the television. Probably, yeah. Major city. You can be sure that nothing ever happens in Vermont. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know why I was waiting for you to be like, oh, hell yeah, the whole state's <laughs> burned down. <laughs> Just... Maple trees came alive and started attacking people. So they're ants. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, the closest that I have here is Philly, which got pretty intense. Yeah. I've been hearing about that from Caitlin's family. Yeah, they took down the uh, the statue of Mayor Rizzo, too, which I don't think was ever going to happen. Nice. So that was quite a surprise. But yeah, I've uh, I've one I have a couple friends who live in Philly now. Granted, not in the city, in the city, but close enough that they were affected by it. And they said shit was getting pretty real. Yeah. That and it'll probably stay that way. Me. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. No, shit got real in a smallish. I the stuff went down badly in Boston because some idiots closed the tea and nobody could get home, which was a brilliant idea. Uh, but then everything around that was fine. And then Brockton got a little weird, but that's Brockton, so that didn't surprise me. Announce either because that town is just full of. Like, a lot of people of color, and then a lot of really, really dumb, broke white people. So, stuff went down badly there, too, which was not surprising in the least, but, yep. A potent mixture. Yeah, a potent mixture, mixture of stupid that is Brockton. Sorry if you're in Brockton, but you know your city's crap. Um, that, sound, that sounds so weird. <laughs> there are, like, roads that, like, cut off and dead end in the middle of, like, nowhere. In the town, in the city, in the town, I'm like, why? Why is this road just dead end? It's not Maybe a cul-de-sac. They... It just like somebody built it, like cut it off in like mid road. We have some of those around here too. What typically happens around here with that phenomenon is uh, the funding ran out for the project, <laughs> and that was it. So they just left it there. We have several of those around us, especially on the highway. We have a a re-entry way. So you get off like a main highway to get towards the town we live in. And I guess a lot of people were just using that exit and then the traffic lights after that to just do a UE. So they built a re-entry ramp. And it's been ready for like months, maybe close to a year, but still has like the cones up and everything. I guess because they just ran out of money or something <laughs> like to do the finishing touches. So now that's just it. You can't use it. It's perfectly finished road. You could use it right away. But no, whatever final little you know chef's kiss uh, they had to do to it they couldn't so now it's just a useless piece of asphalt i'm gonna it call sucks. people i'm gonna call people that from now on they're they're useless pieces of asphalt oh. <laughs> that, that'll that cut them deep <laughs> but it works so well then you're calling them a useless piece of ass just... <laughs> um yeah, this this episode will be mostly just talking about news is catching up over the last two weeks because a lot of shit happened. Um, besides, uh, besides uh, a solidarity with our our uh, community of people of color in the anime community, uh, yeah, 
everything went south almost immediately the day after we recorded the last episode. And progressively got worse since then. So, yeah, we've got a lot to catch up on. So I'm going to switch this over to Kestrel so you can read this with the gravitas that it deserves. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, right after our last podcast. Um, so it's not really news anymore since it's been two weeks. Um, but it's time for us to acknowledge the passing of Zach Birchie. And normally when something like this would happen, I would explain who the person was. Um, this time I feel like not only is that not necessary, but even referring to it as news seems unnecessary. And the reason for that is that I can't really imagine anyone listening to our podcast who doesn't listen to Ancast. And that means you know who Zach Birchie is because he hosted every single episode except I think one for the over 10 years that Ancast ran almost weekly. Um, and since this has happened, um, his friends and colleagues have put together a memorial service online. Justin Savakis ran it and 30 of the other um, friends and colleagues contributed to it, including our own Darius Washington. Um, and that has been published by Justin as the final episode of Ancast. So you probably already heard that. If you haven't, definitely go check that out. Um, there's some really moving stuff in there. I have never interacted with Zach at all, but I was subscribed to and listened to every episode of Ancast that he hosted for those 11-ish years. Um, so I felt like between that and reading his writing, uh, especially knowing his voice through the podcast and really getting a sense of that in his very distinctive writing. Uh, I felt like I really knew him as a critic and Ancast was a big influence on why I wanted to do a podcast for so many years and has been a, an inspiration for what I want our podcast to be like. And even, uh, listening to him and reading some of his writing around the time that the podcast and cast started, uh, that was kind of when I was getting into, you know, thinking about critiquing and writing about anime, uh, seriously as more than just like my dumb little hobby that I keep to myself. And I think that was a big inspiration influence for that as well. So I have definitely disagreed with him a lot and, especially in those early days and probably a long time before that, he had a way of pissing people off when they had different opinions. He was very uh, passionate about his opinions and sometimes seemed dismissive and mocking of uh, others. But I couldn't help but respect the eloquence with which he was able to articulate uh, his passion and his opinions all throughout the time that I listened to him and read his work, um, as much as I wanted to disagree with him and be dismissive of his opinions, he just carried them so well. And then over the years, he got much more mellowed out about that, much kinder, more compassionate, just wanted to focus on the positives and let everyone have their passions and explore them the same way and find just as much value in them. So... I definitely appreciated watching him grow over, you know, basically the, the course of his 30s that he ran the podcast and seeing that he could appreciate um, other perspectives a lot more. And that just kind of helped round out my respect because um, I always knew that he was a really great writer and was great at articulating his thoughts. So to have that point of contention removed uh definitely gave me a more positive outlook on him so it was hard to hear that news i expected it was the case from the day before when i saw his friends talking about having lost someone i figured he was kind of the only person who uh fit in the middle of that venn diagram um but it was still very hard to see it announced uh i think he was 40 years old so definitely go check out that uh, and cast finale if you haven't already and 
see what all of his friends who actually knew him have to say. Yeah, I remember when uh, Chris was talking in the uh, the podcast Slack channel about something huge was going to, you know, news-wise was going to drop, uh, you know, pretty pretty soon. I think it was the day before mm-hmm. uh, everywhere. I thought it was, you know, I definitely wasn't expecting this. I mean, I can't say I really knew or know really anything about Zach because for the most part I don't you know, read a lot of uh, anime journalism or listen to many podcasts just in general. But um, I'd seen his name a lot on the ANN site, so I I was familiar with with him and uh, his stature within that uh, company as well as just in fandom in general. But man, I thought when Chris was like something real was going to drop, I thought it would be something more along the lines of of you know a. a you know, Blu-rays for Evangelion or something like something, something good. Uh, I, think I guess he prefaced it, prefaced it with like some very bad news coming or something. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> I I think I just saw the something huge is about to drop, and then I didn't check back in. Mm, yeah. Like I never looked back at what anything else he said. It was just something really big is about to to be announced or whatever. However he phrased it, and I was like, oh well, then I'll wait to see tomorrow. And then closed the Slack and didn't open it back up. I typically, uh, since I use Slack through my phone exclusively, I don't really have it up all the time. So I, I I must have missed that part. But yeah, this was definitely out of the blue and not anything that I was expecting. And it's certainly very, uh, very sad to hear. Um, I wonder, it seems like everybody, he was one of those guys that everybody knew. Like just googling his name, it's like every website or company that has anything to do with anime has a, a memoriam up for him, which uh, is which is like cool in a way. Like he seemed to have a, a, such a huge impact just all around in general. But it's yeah. very yeah, it's very sad, very uh, yeah. very ick. Yeah, one thing I didn't mention. Uh... If people only know him from the podcast, he was also the executive editor of ANN for many, many years. Um, that's now been taken over by Lindsay Leverage. But uh, yeah, he was part of ANN for almost its entire existence for over 20 years um, and has been a full time editor for the past 15 years and uh, definitely a formative force in it. Yeah, he was basically like one of the de, de facto, like, four faces of that website yeah it's like him justin and like two other people which it, it was like everybody recognized you know his name in the in the english anime community because he was just that prominent and prevalent yeah yeah i would say he is the most prominent uh anime critic in the u.s i would think i would think yeah the only one i could really think of that comes to mind and i don't even know his name uh, to be honest, was he also worked for A and N? It was the guy who did like that. Uh, Ask me anything, like letters that people would ask about stuff in the so, anime industry. Yeah, I think he did bad Answer, anime bad. That could be Answer Man is a column that has been through a lot of people, and actually mm-hmm. Zach was the original Answer Man. He pioneered the column. Yeah, and it's uh, gone through like three or four or five different people at this point. Maybe they're yeah. on their sixth now. I can't remember. No, Justin, I think, was going to be the last one, and I think he was fourth or fifth. Yeah, I know. Um, I didn't Mike do it for a while? And Yeah, it, I think Kane was thinking of Mike Tool. Yeah, Bamboo, yeah, I'm Bamboo did Mike it for Tool. a while, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking of, because Mike Tool also did, like, the bad anime bad stuff. Yeah. And like, conventions. Yeah, I feel like Mike Tool... He's certainly, you know, been an anime critic throughout the years, but I feel like he's just more of a personality in several different aspects of the industry at this point. Whereas for, like, sheer journalism and critique, I feel like Zach is the most, has been the most prominent for the past 15, 20 years. Uh, I don't know. It was just, it was, it was probably the most shocking news to wake up to on that. On a morning after everybody stopped alluding yeah. to what had happened and was like, holy crap. Everybody's reaction was just holy crap. It's kind of yeah. a shame because we're kind of, 
uh, uh, Phantom Post is situated in on the East Coast for the most part. A lot of our we, I mean, we we have an international you know set of writers and stuff, but for the most part, we're headquartered in the you know Boston, spreading outward from there. So a lot of the conventions and stuff that you know our main pe- writers attend are on the east coast and and ends set on the west coast so it's like i never got to meet zach i i mean a lot of us didn't get to meet him yeah i mean i i have seen him at a few conventions um i went to ax one year and i went to the anime news network panel as well as i just saw him and jacob in like the uh press area when I was doing an interview, um, actually Jacob did one right before me with the same people. And then uh, at Otakon a few years ago, I think Annan had a panel there that he hosted as well. So I saw him there, but I never like talked to him because you know, I never talked to him online. I really had no reason to. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate that I'll never get a chance to now because you know I feel like I knew him so well just listening to God who knows how many hours of him. Uh, yeah, and, um, I think Arius is maybe the only one on the fandom post who, like, used to write for ANN and was part of that community and everything, so that's why he was part of their, uh, Memoriam podcast. Yep, so just go listen to that Memoriam, um... I don't know sad sad times sad times all around yeah i i went to bed that night before uh after everyone had been alluding to something happening 100 percent convinced that this was the case uh but i was still just trying to tell myself that there could be someone else that it was or you know at that point you know i already knew that someone had died so it wasn't going to be happy news regardless but just to be someone who's so present in like my uh anime journalism and uh talk show consumption for so many years definitely uh cut deeper indeed indeed all right right. (sighs) yeah let's move on to some other industry (laughs) news that's not soul crippling yes uh so next piece of news um the Attack on Titan, the final season, anime's promo video reveals new staff at MAPPA. So this was announced last year that Wit Studio would be done with Attack on Titan after the previous season, uh, season three, part two. And then it was announced at the end of that season that the final season would begin fall 2020. Um, nothing else had been said about it. It was kind of assumed as time was going on that based on everything else getting delayed, it probably wouldn't keep that release date. Um, And it seems like it's probably not going to. It doesn't have a confirmed delay date or even a confirmed delay, Um, but they've taken down the fall 2020 claim. Uh, And now they've announced that the studio replacing WIT will be MAPPA. And the core staff, um, Jun Shishido, I've seen him credited as chief director, uh, chief unit director, production chief, a few different things that could mean slightly different things. Even if he is chief director, that could mean slightly different things depending on the production. Um, The main series director is Yuichiro Hayashi, series composition by Hiroshi Seko, music by Hiroyuki Sawano and Kote Yamamoto, and character design by Tomohiro Kishi. Now, when this was announced with the two, two and a half minute trailer that dropped with it, uh, I had a lot of reactions and I came up with like a huge page of notes just on the spot that I sent to you guys. So I feel like I should go over most of that now. So I want to let anyone else who has any thoughts speak first. Um, Not on that in particular. I like MAPPA as a studio and that is my only comment and i'm way behind on attack on titan so i have nothing to say about anything 
Yeah, I think I've generally enjoyed most of the studio map of things that I've ever seen. So at least from my perspective, as someone who also doesn't watch Attack on Titan, I feel like this is a, at least like a good studio that could take over. Like they, they have a good track record with like a, yeah, like just a lot of, a lot of experience in shows. So that's cool. You know, it's, I feel like cautious optimism would maybe be about as bad as it gets unless you have some type of vendetta against MAPPA. Right. PJ, you're the only one who watches it. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't know what to say in situations like this because I feel like every time this happens, the opposite of what I expect to happen happens. Like (laughs) when uh, Origairu switched studios, I was like, fuck that, I'm not going to like that at all. And I wound up liking the new one more. So it's like I won't I won't trash anything until I see it. It's interesting though. All right. <laughs> I just want to get into my thoughts. <laughs> my very extended thoughts. Uh okay. So I have mixed feelings. Um first of all, obviously I didn't want an entire staff change for the final season of a series that has been so yeah. consistent and increasingly perfected its signature style. Um, exactly why this happened, we'll likely never know, similar to One Punch Man. And even if a studio is done with a series, some of these staff members should have no direct ties to the studio, so it seems like they'd be able to keep more of them on board if they wanted to. So, to change so much for what's obviously just a direct continuation and conclusion of a hugely popular project for years is baffling in any context. So, the trailer looks fine. It's not surprising that they could cut together two minutes of their most choice animation to make a trailer that would inspire confidence. MAPPA is a fine studio, um, but their work in the past year can't compare to the studio that gave us by far the best season of Attack on Titan and a stellar adaptation of Vinland Saga back-to-back in that time. I haven't found myself impressed by anything from MAPPA since Dododo, um, and I have now just watched all of uh, their adaptation of the strangely similarly named Dodo Hedoro. Um, and uh, I worry about the possibility of them choosing that style more in the future. I wrote a review of the series, and I focus a lot on the visual style of that, which is very CG heavy. Um, and it's not bad as very CG heavy shows go, but it's a turn that. I don't necessarily want to see the studio making because they certainly don't have it down like Orange has it down. Um, And their 2D work has been very strong. So uh, it looks like they're trying to match wit as much as possible for this, though. Um, And it might be a step down, but I'm nowhere near as concerned as I rightfully was for One Punch Man. Um, Like I said, they kind of dropped the fall 2020 date from here so i'm guessing that means it will be some later time that maybe they haven't planned yet uh but at least the delays under these circumstances make a lot more sense than they did for one punch man which just kept getting delays Mm -hmm. uh and they were very behind on that even to the very end even after all the delays and given the amount of animation that mappa already has to share for this and the fact that the season was announced with a release date almost a year ago, and Wit was confirmed to not be involved months before that, uh, MAPPA could have been working on this for a long time, and hopefully it's safe to assume that its schedule is on the better side for that, and they have uh, a lot of stuff ready ahead of time. So probably my biggest concern is trying to make the Attack on Titan anime without Tetsuro Araki. Um... He directed the first season, Chief directed the rest with Masashi Koizuka working under him as the main director, and Koizuka has grown into a fine protege, but to wipe that slate clean of both directors and bring in completely fresh blood is extremely worrying to me. Like I said, Shishio's role isn't quite clear to me at the point at this point. Um Having directed both of the Hajime no Ippo sequels, I could have some amount of confidence in him, uh, but the bulk of the directing work is certainly going to go to Hayashi, who is a Mappa man through and through, which isn't too surprising that they give him the role, similar to what JC Staff did with One Punch Man. 
Um, and I haven't seen that much of his work. Uh, Doro Hedoro is now most of what I've seen from him. And he did an okay job with that, I felt like. Uh, it seemed like he didn't quite match the tone at first, but I think as it went on, it was just a matter of that tone is going to seem bizarre no matter who's taking it on. Um, so I thought that was okay. But having no involvement from Araki is almost guaranteed to be the biggest blow. Um, so hopefully the other factors can cover for that. And actually, since this came out, uh, Shuhei Yabuta, who directed Vinland Saga for Wit Studio last year, uh, announced that he actually storyboarded and directed that entire trailer. So it doesn't even give us an indication of what Hayashi's direction will be like in the series. Um, taking Kobayashi off of series composition seems unnecessary, but I'm 100% confident with Seko. He did series composition for both seasons of Mob Psycho 100, writing most of the episodes of the second. He did series composition for Vinland Saga and wrote every single episode of that. And he's been writing more episode scripts for Attack on Titan than anyone else has since the beginning of the series. And he wrote most of the latest season, including all of the best episodes. Um, having Sawano split composing duties seems less than ideal, but nearly all of Yamamoto's work has been co-composing scores with Sawano. So it seems pretty clear that he's intended to be a protege that takes some burden off of Sawano while still letting him spread his signature style to all of the big projects that demand it. I don't think there's much need for concern that this won't sound like Attack on Titan anymore. At this point, Solano has composed so much for the series that it doesn't seem like they need much new material anyway. Yeah. Most of his, most of his later work on it has just been new arrangements of existing pieces. Um, so that should be fine. Asano's character designs were also a pretty distinct trademark for Attack on Titan, so hopefully Kishi can live up to that. Uh, his character designs for Doro Hedoro um, didn't really get to shine through with the blend of CG that it had with the 2D artwork, um, but his other character, character design work has been pretty competent, so that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, while the animators in general will probably not be quite as strong as Wits, it's uh, Arifumi Imai that I'm particularly particularly concerned to lose. Not only did he animate all of the best cuts of the series, he's also the only person I've ever seen given the credit of action animation director, and his ability to bring Araki's vision to motion is such a crucial part of the visual language of Attack on Titan and what makes its action, action scenes so exhilarating, iconic, and unmatched only rivaled by the same team aping the style they established for Attack on Titan in its bizarre rip-off Kavaneri. So hopefully <laughs> someone is able to copy him well enough. Um, and if he can't keep making Attack on Titan feel like it should, maybe he could do some work on Spider-Verse 2 or something, because that's basically what his style for Attack on Titan has been, is Spider-Man web-slinging. Um, and I suppose it's fitting that uh, this came right after Doro Hedero was available on American Netflix. Uh, I think it was the day after. Because uh, it's basically the same team that we're getting here. It's the same studio, same director, same writer, same character designer. The only major difference is the composer. Um, they're, of course, just carrying that over from the previous seasons of Attack on Titan and bringing along his protege this time. Because uh, that's really the only thing you can't make consistent um, or make it feel like it's consistent without just plagiarizing the previous composer. Um, so hopefully I can trust, based on this trailer, that they're sticking much more closely to Wit's work than going with what they did for Doro Hedoro. Uh, but, you know, the trailer can only offer a small fraction of what to expect. And like I said, it's not even the actual series director who worked on it. There's, like huge potential for failure with this like there's there's a lot riding on them especially since it's coming off of the best season of attack on titan so far that like that's what changes everything if this had happened like season two or season three it would still suck but it'd be like okay that's that's mm -hmm. forgivable but we're like you said we're, we're at the end <laughs> like it's right. having a change like this now it's just odd and i feel like even even if they're able to emulate what wit did 
to the best of their abilities, there are going to be people that are still like, whatever. And yeah, I don't know. It's 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 going to be weird, and that's why I don't want to say much until I actually like see it in action. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to you know write it off or anything. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm really hoping that it lives up to what Wit had established and even can surpass it in some ways if possible. But, you know, I can't help but have a lot of thoughts going into it because of how much that staff has made Attack on Titan what it is. And, you know, it was... It was what studio's first project, so it's kind of yeah. what made the studio. It's it, there's like nothing about this change to get excited about. I feel, and that's the problem. It's like there's no like one element where it's like cool. All right, that. It's just mm-hmm. everything's different, and it's, it's it's weird. Yeah, and especially like you said, coming off of you know the a- absolute pinnacle of Attack on Titan, like this is what this series can be. Let's keep this going, and then everyone's gone. It's, it's not, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence because even if it was like all of my favorite creatives that they were replaced with, I still know that the previous team was the ones, were the ones who gave me that incredible season of Attack on Titan. And I'm not sure that any other team can fit the material quite as well. So it's, it's tough. Now, here's a good question. Uh, the manga hasn't ended yet, right? That's true. It hasn't? So, I thought it did. No. Whoa. It's still running. It's gotta be ending soon. Yeah, I mean, this happens a lot, especially with big projects. It happened with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, where the final chapter and the final episode came out on, like, the same day. Mm-hmm. So they're probably coordinating for something similar to that for the manga of this. And if, uh, I don't know how the manga schedule has been affected but like shonen jump hasn't been all that affected um compared to a lot of tv anime so like the one piece manga is still running you know it's like bi-weekly at this point whereas the anime has been on hiatus for months so if the same thing happens here then they could uh be well ahead of schedule and the entire manga could be over before the season starts i don't know well, that's understandable as the staff for an, an anime is typically larger than a manga, right? Some of the yeah. mangas are like one man bands or one person bands, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Or maybe a person and an assistant or two and anime have full fledged, you know, sometimes feels like 20, 30, 50 people, depending on what you're looking at. It always makes me laugh when I read like a shoujo manga or something and the and the assistant is like literally like the author's like sister. That, that always happens. Every shoujo manga, the assistant is the author's sister. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I weird. wonder if it's, it's just tra- if it's just tradition now. Yes. Now it's something you have to do if you want to be cool in the shoujo community. I mean, right. what what happens when you're like me and it's like your sister inherited all the math skills and none of the art skills? <laughs> Make her your assistant and she can do the accounting. Yeah, I guess... There you go. But yeah, you're definitely right. That's why uh, anime has been so much more effective than manga. Um, I think manga is still taking hit because generally you will have, you know, your team of assistants. And for some mangaka, that can get, you know, not huge, but more people than are supposed to be together in a small room. Um, And there are small rooms. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But yeah, Yeah, there's 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 a good video... um, on YouTube from a guy who does a lot of like Japanese based cultural videos and he follows around a mangaka one day and it looked like a really nice office, but it was still small and there was six people crammed in there Yeah, and it looked really comfortable in terms of how I've heard of other like manga and anime working conditions, but it still was like, yeah, this isn't going to fly under COVID-19. They're still sitting like three feet away from each other. Yeah. And like the manga, industry could be more affected uh by editorial than the actual creatives because you know the publishers are still offices of a bunch of people going to work every day and working together in that environment so you know and meeting personally with the mangaka having them come in occasionally so all of those things you know you can do 
some amount of it online like a lot of people are doing but certainly it can still be effective and there's kind of been messages put out by like weekly show and jump of you know things might shut down at some point we're kind of playing it by ear uh but yeah anime production certainly you have all of those people cramped together and voice recording is one of the biggest issues because you know if they did it like we did in america it, for anime dubbing it wouldn't be so bad but since they have all the actors together that doesn't really work well that i mean there have even That's... been issues here with people not able to like funimation sent equipment to their people so mm-hmm. they could keep doing stuff but uh guild wars 2 which i play uh they had released they have full voice acting usually for the releases their most recent release had no voice acting because it was too dangerous to bring the VAs in to record their lines. So they have to go back and patch it in later when they're allowed to go back to work. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely happening in anime dubbing as well. A lot of anime dubs have, you know, been delayed and postponed and Funimation is doing some purely from home. Uh, Netflix, a lot of the new stuff they're releasing doesn't have the dub at first. It takes a few weeks for that to get added. So yeah, it's uh, it's affecting everything. So I'm sure this season will not be coming out in fall 2020. Even if they had completed production, um, probably everything in that time slot is just going to get shifted down one season or two. So it probably has no chance. Yeah, fall was already pretty stacked, and now who knows how many of those shows are going to be pushed. Yeah, several of them already have been. Which is a shame. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, that's everything. That's I'm watching, what, like, five shows instead of my normal 2025? 20, this is the longest year ever. Yeah, I'm it's watching only five as well. It's, it's odd. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so that must be weird for you guys, because watching five for me, I'd be like, whoo, I'm really putting in the fucking I work. so <laughs> much extra time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Right. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> You could watch no anime, and I don't understand how you do everything you do, DJ. Yeah, man, I don't get it either sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> DJ has found the, the powers of time compression, and we just... I work like 80 hours a week. What are you doing, dude? Like, I'd finish working, and then I'd work for another, like, six hours on my game. <laughs> Shit, gotta whack. pump that smut out. DJ's got a little Barely plan of smut. cult or something going on. I do. Yeah, I, I'm a cult leader accidentally. Whoops. I mean, that's the best way to do it. <laughs> I was... Acci- a- accidentally, so then you you know, you know can always, you know, feign, feign innocence when the shit hits the fan and be like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't tell him to do anything. DJ was, accidentally um, became smut Jesus. I was, I was watching Terrace House with my girlfriend the other day, and she, she got really serious for a second, and she, she looked at me and she was like, DJ... I really think you could be a dictator. <laughs> and just like the most serious tone. Like it was like still something like I wanted to do with my life. Like trying to convince me that I can. And I'm just like, what the hell is this? And so that's what people keep telling me and I don't get it. I just write. Your, your girlfriend is ride or die. That's what she's telling you. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so yeah, I am uh, I might be a dictator soon. <laughs> it's It's still possible for me, apparently. <laughs> Well, what you should do to experiment with that is, like, hold up an update for your visual novel and have all the people who are your fans tell them to do something inane and stupid. And if they do it, well, then you know you've got them hook, line, and sinker, baby. No, oh, don't man. don't go down that route. That is the path of evil. Don't do it. Don't become a dictator. No, I think you really could, DJ. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thank no. you, Kane. You could be smut, D- smut Jesus. No, no, it's... Degenerate Jesus. That's what DJ says. Yes, exactly. Oh, yes, okay. I look so much more like Jesus than I normally do. Like, I haven't shaved <laughs> at all during the quarantine. I haven't cut my hair. It's like I'm, like, just one robe away from being the Messiah. I just look like a redneck. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really all I got going on. Because my hair just morphs into, like, mullet. It goes... <laughs> <laughs> there, there are stages. The it's front like, of your hair it's like doesn't fr- grow. It's just the back. It's like Frieza's power levels, essentially. I've got stages where I change drastically in what I look like. So there'll be short hair me, which just looks like your average white guy. 
and then it goes into like emo hair because the front of my hair will grow before my back so i'll get that like flip thing going and then that'll stop and then it's just all back flow baby and then it just looks like an emo like mullet <laughs> fucking combination and i look like a mess i did just shave recently though because my beard was getting quite long and annoying so now i've gone from like woodsman redneck to just your standard trailer park pbr redneck <laughs> <laughs> i i tried going a week without shaving uh which is the first time i haven't shaved daily in eight years oh my god um and it was awful i had to just go back to shaving daily i can't imagine having i don't know i don't have the willpower to shave every day <laughs> See, I thought that this would be just a nice, lazy move to make, uh, but it just gets so itchy and uncomfortable after. It's rough days. for like the first few days, yeah. Well, it peaked. It, it it spiked back up to you know Memorial Day hit here, and then the next thing I knew, it was summer. So I I had to go back to shaving my legs. So, ugh. <laughs> At least you don't have that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that That's... feels like. That's smooth. true. I'll, I'll never have to worry about that. <laughs> it's very smooth. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, could have no, just seemed like a lot more work than just a chin. Yeah, eh. a lot, lot more surface area. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's a lot more work. No, it's just you know, sloppy. You just run it up your legs. Well, I feel like if you miss a patch, you'll definitely know it too. It's always the knees. <laughs> <laughs> no, now the only thing I got the the thing that's annoying though is I don't shave shave. Like I have like a Phillips one blade type deal, so I'll I'll never get it all, and then it grows back in, and then it's just my face is full of small needles, mm -hmm. all the time. I can't remember the last time I did like a legitimate full on, you know, razor style shave. Yeah, that's the only thing I've ever done. So that was another problem: is it got long, and then I tried shaving it as if I had just shaved the previous day, and that oh, didn't no. work. That was very painful. Yeah, that's that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I've been doing this every day for eight years. I didn't think about it. No, I don't blame you. I've done that too, and it's it's quite bad to try and to try and shave like longer hair when it's just you got that straight razor because then it, essentially you're just ripping it out of your face. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it sucks. It's real bad. What were we talking about? I have no <laughs> idea. Oh, speaking of shaving, there was a great uh, shaving cross promotion a few years back. For a series called Evangelion. And speaking of Evangelion, uh, the UK company Anime Limited. Wow. Uh, made... You like that? You like that? <laughs> yeah, that was this good. Was M that was MVP level. <laughs> uh, the UK company Anime Limited made some announcements the other weekend, a few days ago, um, for one of their online conventions, which, by the way, are happening just constantly now. Uh and one of them was that they will be releasing the Neon Genesis Evangelion Ultimate Collection Blu-ray next year in the UK. Uh, so that will include basically all the original stuff, all the stuff that Netflix has. So the original TV series, um, the Death True Squared, however you want to pronounce it, bullshit recap thing, uh, and End of Evangelion. And, uh, you know, there wasn't much hope for uh an american blu-ray release a few years ago and then the netflix thing came and it wasn't clear whether that meant there was a better or worse chance for that happening but with this happening it seems a lot more hopeful and i believe as part of these announcements they also announced uh be the beginning which was a netflix original anime not only for the UK, but for the US, which I think is the first time that they've done anything for the US market. So given that, I feel like the chances now are a lot better than they've been for a long time. So hopefully we finally get that. And with Fly Me to the Moon and maybe the original dub. I'm assuming that it'll be uh, like region locked. Yeah, I mean, the, the UK Fuck. release will be region B for sure, yeah. I really need to get one of the region-free, like, Blu-ray players, even though they're way more expensive than their non-region-free counterparts. Yeah. I feel like if, if you want to do, like, a home theater type thing or you care about movies enough, it's worth the purchase because there's just a good amount of content that we don't get over here. Like, 
those Blu-rays uh, that you just can't import and play. Like it just doesn't work like work like that. Yeah, because I think of like those region free Blu-ray players that you'd pay like 120 bucks at Best Buy for. They they jump to 300 bucks, mm-hmm. so they get quite expensive. But then you can play everything. Yeah, and you can I mean, play. You can play all the shit. It's it's usually not a concern for me because you know we have the same Blu-ray region as Japan, so I can import stuff, and we're generally the most spoiled importer of anime in the U.S. Uh, we mostly get everything, but there are definitely some exceptions. And if this ends up being one for a while, then that'll really suck. I think the only reason it would be is that Netflix just wants to keep too much of a hold on it. Um, but I think. You know, anyone is perfectly capable of just licensing the home video rights. I don't think Netflix can have any sway over that at this point. So hopefully this leads to something. And, you know, if a company like Anime Limited can pay what Kara wants, then I would assume American anime companies can. Do they have any, like, uh, promotional images out about what this thing's going to look like? Or was it just a straight up, like text news release uh i believe it was just news um i don't think they have any mock-ups or anything yeah because i would obviously really like to replace my uh bootleg dvds of Evangelion <laughs> someday <laughs> that'd be a super nice thing to do and i wish i would have the opportunity outside of trolling ebay for a non-astronomical priced dvd set yeah i mean because yeah, I'm not paying three hundred plus dollars for DVDs. I'm definitely glad that I was able to, you know, just grab the platinum tin from ADV off of, you know, an FYE shelf back when that was still in print. Because um, at least that was, you know, under a hundred bucks for that, and that's the best release the series has had in the U.S pretty much anywhere until the Japanese Blu-rays came out uh, five years ago. But, you know, it's DVD only, and now you can watch it on Netflix, and that's in HD, and their servers are pretty good for streaming, but you don't have Fly Me to the Moon, and you don't get the old dub if you want to check that out. The uh, subtitles and some of the script of the new dub have some questionable choices, and that will probably carry over for all of these new Blu-ray releases because that's what Kara is insisting and, you know, they get to make the decisions. So that's unfortunate. It might not be ideal, but certainly if we got a Blu-ray release with at least the Japanese version and a new dub and Fly Me to the Moon restored, then that would be the, the best we can hope for at this point. And, I mean, Jesus, it's something that we should have in 2020. should be able to have a physical release of Evangelion of all things. Indeed. So, yeah, fingers crossed, because I would really like to have this on uh, physical media. Um, a nice set, too, would would mm-hmm. be appreciated. Like, I would want some thought and care to be put into it, and not just like, here you go, here's the Blu-rays in box, enjoy. <laughs> I mean, if anyone gets it, they're not just going to do that. It's Evangelion. They can make so much money off of that. They could. That's very true. It's Evangelion. I guess, I guess maybe to be more accurate, I would like it to be nice, but I don't want to have to choose between a shitty version and a $600 <laughs> version. Yeah. We'll see what the details are for the anime limited version, because I would hope, based on what they're saying, it seems like a pretty good compromise, and it seems like if an American company gets it, they'll probably follow suit with that um so i think we could definitely get something pretty good out here and you know it's something that's so huge and has been unavailable for so long even though it's back on netflix now that you know they could do a lot of different tiers of it and you know offer the completely bare bones version the super collector's edition and then you know something that's just pretty nice and reasonably priced not super expensive Kind of like how they're how they're supposedly rolling with the was it Fate Zero Blu-rays might be like affordable, but you're you're just gonna kind of get the box and the discs. 
Uh, I mean, they re-released Fate Zero in a complete set, and I think by most people's standards, it's still not affordable, just compared to what it was before. Like, Aniplex tiers are, all right, I bought the imports for $700, and then oh I God. bought the domestic releases for $300. Oh my God. And <laughs> now <laughs> you can get the complete series for like 150 that's almost within my price range <laughs> yeah i mean if you just compare that's 50 percent off yeah yeah so i just that's have to wait good. for 50 percent off of that and then i can 75 percent <laughs> off when i first bought it yeah yeah Oof. i only have like i think two or three things from anaplex and two of them are movies so mm -hmm. that definitely helps yeah <laughs> And the movies are still yeah. like fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah. With uh, the Bunny Girl Senpai movie, I was like, "All right, sweet. It's pretty reasonably priced." But then I also have to buy the hundred and whatever dollar yep. series release that I didn't buy. Yep. <laughs> so I did, of course. <laughs> yeah. But the movie definitely warranted it. It, oh, it warranted so having good. a complete collection. Yeah. Yeah, that's I don't... a series I would buy. I don't believe I own anything Aniplex, which is right in line with how I normally do my shopping for anime physical discs. I probably openly wretched when I pick up Aniplex stuff at cons. I just forget that they're so expensive. Chris gave me Charlotte, and I was very happy about it. I don't think he wanted it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking through their store right now, just, like, scrolling through them, like, painful. nope, 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 nope. I mean, they're all great releases, so it's, like, definitely worth it, but it's so much money. It is I, a sh fucking shit ton. I've spent many thousands of dollars on Aniplex Blu-rays. Oh. Ugh. Good lord. <laughs> Well, at least you could. Well, I don't even know if you could. I would say you could use them as a pseudo insurance policy in case shit hits the fan. But then again, you got to find someone else who will buy them. Yeah, oh, there I mean, will always be people who will buy those. Oh yeah, and most of them are limited editions. And after enough time has passed, they go out of print and they become in very high demand. Especially since Aniplex isn't always great at reprinting their stuff. So definitely, a lot of them have skyrocketed in value even from what i paid originally like i don't know how much that uh turn like on blu-ray box that i paid 554 when it was new goes for now but i bet it's a lot more than that oh i'm sure uh but it's signed by the director so i'm never letting go of that and my fate zero box set is also signed by the director Uh, it's a brief scroll shows that it's how much did you pay for it? Uh, yeah, yeah, five hundred fifty. Uh, it still sells for like that much. Actually, maybe less depending on what version you have. I just typed in Gurren Lagann Blu-ray set and I'm just scrolling. Yeah, no, they re-released it in a much cheaper, much less extravagant edition. This is uh, what the original is... Japanese Blu-ray release from 2013. Uh, okay, so then I should go price highest first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just this, then... it's this massive, massive hard box. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Uh, $600? Yeah, it's about the same. Okay. But anyway, there are a lot of releases that have, like, doubled in value. And that is a really big box. It's like 100 bucks for, or more, originally. Yeah. But that chances box are, looks I won't sell fucking much. dope. Yeah, it's great. Right. My next piece of news, um, fresh off the presses. So uh, it's kind of relevant for a few reasons. A few days ago, maybe last week, um, the... Was it this week? I don't know. I feel like it was the beginning <laughs> of this week. HBO Max launched. Uh, I don't know how time works anywhere. Um and it came with the entire Studio Ghibli library, except Grave of the Fireflies. And so there's been a lot of talk about the Ghibli films. And, um, you know, they haven't made a film since 2014. And Miyazaki's next one could be, you know, Suzuki is saying now he's hoping for 
like 2021 to 2024 at best. Uh, it was originally supposed to have already come out by now, but you know how those things goes, go. Um, so who knows if we're ever getting that one. Hopefully Miyazaki, you know, stays alive and can complete production because, you know, he's going to be in his 80s still working on it. And still smoking a box of cigarettes a day. <laughs> exactly. And just powered by pure anger and overwork. So, you know, I worry for him. Um but while he's working on that, uh, there is another Ghibli movie that Suzuki had alluded to in the past few months that is coming out this year. Uh, since all the movie theaters are closed down, it is premiering on NHK. And that is by uh, Miyazaki's son, Goro, uh, who we've had uh, amusing conversations about in the past. Um, and it is the studio's first full CG film. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. They do pretty good work with the little bit of CG that I've seen for, like, the Boro the Caterpillar short. Um, he had previously directed a CG TV series, which was co-produced with Polygon Pictures, whose CG I do not like. Uh, I would put them well below Orange and Sans Again, as far as CG studios. But, uh... Hopefully with this fully in-house at Ghibli, it'll look a little better. And it is an adaptation of um, Earwig and the Witch, which is a novel by Diana Wynne Jones, who also wrote Howl's Moving Castle, which of course Hayao Miyazaki uh, adapted into an anime film 16 years ago now. Uh, and Hayao Miyazaki is also credited with a planning role in this, so... That might just be a producer like he's been on some other Ghibli films. It might be as a writer as he's been on most of the ones he didn't direct in recent years, including uh, Goro's good film from Up on Poppy Hill, not to be confused with his bad film, Earthsea. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, this will be worth watching because it's been six years since a Ghibli film and it'd be nice to get something new. Has it really been six Is years? It? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it doesn't... It simultaneously doesn't feel that way, but also feels like it's been an eternity. I feel like it's been like four months. Yeah. Well, I have been, you know, eagerly anticipating Ghibli, and especially Miyazaki, the Elder, uh, putting out anything new for at least the past five years since I saw their last film. What was the on last one? Ray, when Marnie was there. Oh, wow. Huh. Yep. Was that any good? I never saw that one. Yeah, that was good. You'll remember I uh, ranked all of the Ghibli films when HBO Max launched. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wasn't... I, think I put I it wasn't, pretty high. It was top, the, like, ten or so out of... Oh, okay. Something. So you, you put, put it at the above? bottom. Uh, Earthsea, bottom for sure. Yeah, that's oh, good. well, okay. What would you put second to yeah, bottom? Yeah, I know you want Pompoko to be bottom. It was down there. <laughs> it was, was it down there? It was down there. I'll, I'll I'm satisfied. It, <laughs> it was in the the few, the very small range of, like, C-level films, which is very bad for Ghibli, but pretty good for anyone else. Ah, Good. Good. <laughs> Down there hanging I've actually out with... never seen Tales from Earthsea, so is that actually bad, or is it just, like, bad given the circumstances? Uh, Mostly bad given the circumstances, but it's not, like, good. Whitewashing a s movie from a book where the main characters are supposed to be people of color. Oh, Ocean Waves is down there too. Good. We agree on a lot of this <laughs> bottom part of your list. Yeah, I was gonna say, where is My Neighbors the Yamadas, but I see it's down towards the bottom. I have never Those seen. Those are that literally one. the the four we just mentioned are literally the four that I don't recommend. Yeah. Hey, good, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, the cat returns, but you actually gave that a B. So right, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like, like uh, a bad, a bad, <laughs> you know, a, this is still a B, <laughs> you know, in the overall scheme of things. Yeah, it's like you can't look at the numbers on his list because yeah, I gotta look at the grades because yeah, I was like, cat returns seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, he gave it a, a B. So I mean, what else? You know, it's like okay. my cat. Hu what are you doing, to my cat husband? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's your worst masterpiece? Is basically what it comes down to. 
Yeah, that is uh, the upcoming Ghibli movie, and uh, that is all the news I have in one hour. Wasn't, uh, maybe I'm remembering it incorrectly, but what about the Red Turtle? Is that? No, okay, that was so that like a was, French yeah. co-production it, or something. Of, I don't know. It involved Ghibli, though, so that's fair to say that they have made a film four years ago. Uh, but it was a mostly French production with just some cooperation from Ghibli. Oh man, I remember that was that was like kind of hyped up on my like streams. I remember seeing like trailers for it, and then it just kind of came and went. Mm-hmm. It's man. got decent. It's got decent scores, like seven point five on IMDb. Rotten Tomatoes is pretty high. I mean, it's pretty high. Like if you combine them all, because I don't think you should ever take one of these and make that your your guiding light. But all of them are like, yeah, this is. This is good. Yeah, I think it was nominated for Best Animated Film for what that's fucking worth. And turtles are my favorite animals. Did I miss this? Caitlin's too. Did this happen and I missed it? Or was it canceled because of COVID? Children of the Sea was supposed to play two nights in April. Did I miss that? Or was it just COVID land and no one was going to the theater? Uh, the American screening was canceled because of COVID, yes. Okay. I wonder if they're going to reschedule that. Damn it. Nothing to do with Studio Ghibli. I'm just reminded me of G Kids with the turtle thing. I was like, oh, what the hell? And then I remembered Children of the Sea was supposed to come out. <laughs> Which also has music by uh, Joe Hisaishi, yeah. who has not worked on anything not by Ghibli in a very long time. So that's exciting. Man. Man. Everything's fucked. <laughs> Accurate. Uh... I think the last time I had seen any, I had seen anything with Joe Hisaishi's music in it may have been if he did this and i want to say he did was nino the, kuni uh, yeah <laughs> yep yes he did work on nino kuni and, and that was probably the best part that was the best part of that movie oh the movie oh, i thought you meant the video the game ah. no he did, a, I watched he did the, the video movie. Ga- he did the video game i didn't even know oh, there know was that. a movie yeah. for it there is it was released yeah. on netflix and emily and i watched it because we were like oh i like the game so maybe the movie will the be okay, and it also really has nice. music by Joe. And I, I rarely say that about Ghibli, Ghibli, whatever you want to fucking say. <laughs> what did you say about it? I said the game did look really nice. Mm, yeah, for sure. Game yeah, has good too. Graphics. The first one, yeah, the first I one's good. That game. The and, second uh, one's pretty good too, though not not quite. I, I didn't end it. up doing the second one. Um, I kind of felt bad about it. Uh, I just didn't get around to it, but I heard it's not quite as good, and technically Ghibli wasn't involved with it like they were with the first one. Well, they were barely involved with the first one, too. It just means that the second game didn't have any animation sequences that weren't in-game animation, so. Otherwise, it was all the same team. The problem with the the Nino Kuni uh, games is, like, the same dipshit that runs that studio writes all their games, and he's not a good writer. <laughs> was it, was yeah. that level, level five? Yeah. Yeah. Because like, they did, they've done some Tales games, right? No. Who does the Tales games? Because the the combat Bandai, systems. Bandai Namco. Because the the <laughs> combat systems really uh, similar, if I remember between those two, that that kind of An action, action RPG? RPG thing, but it's still random encounter at the same time. You just run around in an enclosed space while you're trying to bop bop things, yeah. Yeah, like kill the enemies and stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like. That's becoming kind of popular in recent years. Yeah, menus are of... menus are falling out of favor for more action yeah. action combat. Right. Um, but yeah, but the the movie I didn't bother with because, uh, like, why would you make a Nino Kuni anime film with no involvement by fucking Studio Ghibli? Yeah, I, mean, I didn't. I don't even think I realized that because Netflix didn't really say much. I was just like, "Oh, well, I'm bored." So if this is like the first game or whatever, or like expands upon the lore, this seems fun. But it was like, no, nah, it actually sucks. <laughs> so I guess right. that's the last thing that uh, he said she did the music for that wasn't Ghibli related. The second game in the movie, and then Children of the Sea. Interesting. Yeah, uh, I was trying to find more news that wasn't ridiculous stuff like a uh, cup ramen model, <laughs> which is news to me. Like, 
as in that I would talk about a cup ramen gumpla model all day long. Uh, but I think that's rather niche in a very already niche hobby <laughs> is trying to do that. Uh, yeah, it's just been because of all the COVID stuff kind of slow. Most of the news has been stuff just being delayed or canceled. I like don't, Hath- I like don't know why. Flash movie. But that just that just reminded me of back when, like you know, they used to do McDonald's toys and they made like the little like McDonald's like food items that transformed into like little monsters. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the first thing that popped into my head was like an image of those nineteen eighties like McDonald McDonald's Happy Meal toys. <laughs> when you mentioned that, I'm just like, do do do. I wonder uh, if there. I'm, I mean, I'm sure there are. If, but I bet there'd be a lot of. Uh, storage units being used but you know how speaking of mcdonald's there's people who like try to collect all the happy meal toys oh yeah i wonder if there's how many people out there trying to collect like all of the gundam or evangelion branded merchandise Jesus. oh god i'm and sure there's of, somebody out there how much of a fucking burden that would be to try and get it because i bet a lot of it's like really limited too and especially mm-hmm. probably some of the most inconsequential merchandise is super limited but if you want to be that completionist, you got to try and go out and get it. And I feel like we're, you know, even over here, which we probably, I don't know how frequently we report on anime merchant merchandise in the States that doesn't come over here. But it still seems like even Galleon and Gundam in particular are constantly getting just the dumbest shit. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably why it gets reported on so much, because it's just makes for hilarious stories, stuff you'd never expect. Japan just a, produces so much merch. So much merch. But just like the cross promotions and everything. Like so much stupid shit. The cross promotions are the best. I've yeah. gone I remember going to a couple like uh I may have even had a I mean I think I even did a panel about cross promotions at an Oticon one time. It's been long enough that it would have been like maybe five years ago at this point. Uh where we talked about like the KFC Dragon Ball Z combo. Mm-hmm. Where Goku needed to be powered up, so he <laughs> they gave him a fucking bucket of chicken while he was fighting Frieza, I think, and it allowed him to turn into a Super Saiyan. That shit's the best. Everything I fucking pizza, love man. it. Yeah, that's good. That's right. Yeah, it was a panel. It wasn't necessarily about merchandise like cross promotions, but it was about just like weird, like anime. Uh, merchandise in general regardless of the cross promotion material like when they made a char dildo one time what which yeah the well it wasn't of char but it was the uh horn on the end of his gelgoog which was a mobile suit that had like a unicorn horn coming out of it uh oh and someone God. made made a toy from that and we tried to find one to buy but it was like they must have made like three of them that was licensed? Yes, it was. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was it was licensed. But, you know, nobody really reported on it over here or anything like that. It was just we had found it while searching around older forums and things for you know, the, the really like the truly weird stuff like that. Or I think there was also uh this wasn't an official uh merchandise from a series but there was a company that made uh underpants for water bottles to look like pantsuits that you could buy so they would get all wet and sweaty looking <laughs> which uh... fucking of course of course and we talked about that as well but yeah there's just a lot of uh a lot of stuff out there um I wonder what the profit margins are and things like that. It'd be really interesting if you could do like a deep dive into it just to see how much they turn a profit on and how much it is just to keep the IP out there, like in people's faces all the time. Because really, what are your profit margins on like fucking branded toilet paper and razors? I mean, if you can sell it at a markup just for having some character on it, then why not? That's that's true. That's a, that's a very good point. There's obviously a huge markup. 
So you'd have to see where your where your drop off point would be. So we got to the news pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> I like how an hour is quick for us. I mean, normally we go and you know at least another half an hour or so. If not, well, not for news though. That's not, probably not the for, longest uh, news has ever taken us. Yeah, well, we were hoping to like squeeze an episode out of the news. I mean, normal podcasts end after an hour. Ah, I don't know but, what I don't know what these normal podcasts are you listen to because all the ones I listen to are like three hours long. Alright. I don't not that I want to record for three hours, but I mean we have. Yeah, I think yeah, one of our like, like, like end of the year ones was around that. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like the last the end of the decade one was like approaching four hours maybe. Probably yeah, that it was like an all night thing. Yeah. I think I ate dinner uh at eleven fifty five and Holy went to bed shit. at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Those are good times. Those are good episodes. Go listen to those episodes, uh, DJ fans. <laughs> Just assuming <laughs> the listeners are DJ it. fans now. I assume so. There are probably a few of them. A few. A couple. So, does anyone else have anything to talk about? Um, we can move on to an actual topic. Well, Do you want to start an actual topic? Like an hour and 15 it minutes into topic. it? <laughs> I mean, we could just do. Topic. Okay, how's everybody spending their? Qu- are you guys still in quarantine? Are you guys like, what's the status of where you guys live? Is stuff Nothing starting to open back up? No, okay. Everything's no, opening. opening back up, yeah, right. everything's opening back I, up here. The Starbucks that I go to every morning finally is open again, so that's great. I got a haircut. <laughs> wow! Oh shit! Oh my god! I thought those were like illegal. <laughs> like the prohibition, <laughs> they were up but for like haircuts. a week ago. They were so illegal until like a week ago. Yeah, I'm not really about to just, you know, jump back into right? all the public <laughs> things that are opening up. Cause, yeah, uh, that seems like a really good recipe for like, oh no, all of the death has respiked again. Yeah, yeah Especially exactly. with all the and protests all... now. It's like, yo, Corona's just going to spread again. Yep. Uh. Yeah, I think that's where Emily and I are sitting here, too, is like even when stuff opens up, because I think... Uh, our county is supposed to go into the yellow zone, which is uh, basically some stuff can open up, but other like very personable businesses can't. So like barber shops still can't, but like uh, more big box retails like your Best Buys and 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 things that may have been closed because they weren't essential or what have you can start opening back up again. Some restaurants, I guess, as well for like very limited seating. But we aren't really going to, yeah, we're not too keen on just fucking going out like nothing ever happened. Right, exactly. Um, so we've been taking this opportunity to, I wish I could say, watch a lot of stuff that we didn't, but it's gradually shifted into, we do that for movies, but like for TV shows outside of like <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist, I'm just watching Star Trek again, <laughs> and Emily's watching... uh avatar again which pains me not because avatar is bad avatar is great i love it i think it's one of the best animated series of all time but i bought that fucking shit on blu-ray and she's just watching it on netflix (laughs) Uh, i know listen i bought caitlin like a super nice blu-ray collection of gravity falls um i don't know when it came out a couple years ago uh and she never touched it and then the day Disney Plus launches, she fucking puts on Gravity Falls. Dude, that's that's how Becca is, too. It's People just don't like putting discs and stuff anymore. I know. <laughs> it's it's yeah, weird. No, I'm not necessarily uh, like innocent of all of it, either, since I've just been watching Star Trek that way. But really, it's because it's, it's on more as background noise while I work. So I'm not going to get up and change Blu-ray discs every time I want to, you know in a couple new episodes while I'm trying to get work done. So, but yeah, I, co- I go out in the morning and she's watching. I'm like, we have it on disc. You can just watch that shit on disc and it'll look so good and sound so good. No, nah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it kills me. That was like, my caught my father watching some movie on like, you know, broadcast and it hits a commercial. I'm like, dad, we own this movie. You can put it <laughs> in the TV. Um. <laughs> 
I've decided that uh, I'm past the point of Vulcan being HK. Um, now, Kane, you've seen Talking Galaxy, right? Yes. Yeah, so I've reached uh, episode 10 of that, where my entire universe is just uh, the inside of my apartment. That's, that's my whole life now. We we try to get out to go for walks and like I I'd mentioned why I was gonna be late. We like go pick up our groceries and stuff. But yeah, for the most part it's go for a walk around the neighborhood and then come back inside the apartment. Yeah. Realistically that is exactly the same with us now that it's nice again. because um, it snowed a bunch and then two weeks later it was ninety five. Yeah, that was fun. I was up we we're up uh opening our cottage and it's usually on Memorial Day weekend, which it was kind, of, which was early this year, it's usually like, oh, we'll be lucky if it's not raining and forty five degrees, and if it's like, if it's fifty, if it's sixty, that's good. We got there and it was like ninety one. <laughs> People were in the lake, like the last week of May. I've ne- I have never seen that. <laughs> the worst part was there was no wind and it's bla- black fly season up there. So, yeah, that was fun. It was like walk outside, get swarmed, walk back inside. But yeah, that was wonderful. Melting, hot. Yeah, I definitely, you know, go on walks mostly on the weekends. And, uh, you know, we go pick up our food from the grocery store. Just an order that we put on in online once a week. But other than that, pretty much stay inside, watching stuff. You know, You're- I... I played a video game. Whoa. Holy cool. crap. You know, Shit. Um, Holy crap. What game did you play? Final Fantasy. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I completed that, and I just got back to Muv Love Alternative after seven months of not touching it. Eh. So I'm finally on the final chapter of that. Uh, and, you know, stuff that I've ordered is very slowly coming in. Uh, a lot of it's delayed, a lot of it just isn't shipping, and then what is shipping is taking fucking forever to get to me. Oh yeah, so, I had an experience a with something. I ordered three books on the on this down low, so that I could actually write the reviews of the books that came after them in line, and uh, yeah, it took a good month and a half or something for them to ship from the middle of nowhere, which is way far away from where Amazon usually ships shit from, so... Yeah, I mean, I bought fine. masks that were supposed to be here by now, but just with all the shit that's going down, it's like they're just in the ether. Yeah, the Amazon two-day shipping has turned into a week at best. And my Right Stuff packages, when they finally do ship, um, they normally take, like, almost a week. Uh, but now they're, like, saying an estimated time of delivery and then literally taking a week after that to arrive. So yeah, yeah, I'm not getting much stuff in these days. So I guess it gives me more time for Love Love and the things I do get in, and uh, yeah, watching other TV shows. I've been watching a lot of TV shows. Uh, I beat Neo 2. Yeah! I, I, okay. uh, I finally looked to see, I found where it tells you what your playtime is and realized I'd clocked 130 hours on Jesus, that Jesus, that's more than double what it took me. <laughs> That's a long fucking time. I'm like almost was, done with New Game Plus, and I don't think I'm at that much time yet. Well, I was just enjoying, like, you know, like I was going back and replaying yeah. levels a lot, trying to find all the Kodama, and yeah. I was doing a lot of, like, helping random people and stuff like that. I still haven't helped like anybody. <laughs> I'm a selfish yeah, player. Yeah, I saw, I noticed that because I could see your trophies, and I'm all like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't summoned anybody? Okay. <laughs> just Mr. Hardcore. I didn't need it. I, I mean, I think the spear is kind of easy compared oh, to the Oh, yeah, weapons. the spear is, like, the easiest yeah. weapon to, like, use. But that, I loved it. That and the Odachi. I'm probably gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna probably do the Odachi next after I, because I, like, after you beat the game, you unlock builds and stuff, and so I'm, like, level fucking 180-something, and yeah, I'll be I'm able to do whatever I want soon. two or something. Yeah. So I'll probably do Odachi, like, fucking Tonfa or something. They look cool. I don't know. That's a good game. Really good game. I'm Last glad, boss fight's I'm awesome. I'm glad you're, you told me to buy it. I'm glad so. you beat it. I'm <laughs> glad that you stuck through. Yeah, the first three levels of that game are rough. They are, yeah. Once you get past, once you get past that, it's okay. Yeah, it's like, as soon as you familiarize yourself with, like, 
what your fighting style is and what you're good at, it gets a lot easier. And the first, like, three yeah. zones are just figuring that out. It's it's funny watching everybody who starts the game up going, I can't get past this third level with the poison and the snakes. It's Straight like, up, the yep. first boss of that game, Mezuki, I died to him more than any other boss in the game just because he's the first boss that I was trying to remember how to play. <laughs> I mean, that Damn. game has, I mean, that game's tough, but the easy mode is you just summon people until you find somebody who is horrifically overleveled and they just, just beat something boss. in two yeah. hits with it for you, so. And then you still reap all the benefits of that, so. If you if you want to get into that game, do it now while there's still people playing it, and they will show up and help you kick things butt. It's actually on sale right now for any listener that wants to spend, I believe, Ooh. either 30 or 40 on it instead of the normal 60 I think there's going to be a season pass out soon because Neo DLC, yeah, DLC is normally pretty big. You might want to grab that. Yeah, I think the season pass is out. I wish it would go on sale, but mm, okay. there's, season pass does exist for it. I thought about buying it. And then I remember that that first DLC is coming out around the same time that goes to Tsushima R, so I'm like, oh, oh is I'll it? probably be playing that. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to, it, that's due out in July, and I know that's when... Ghosts is I'm glad out, that they so. said Ghosts is going to be hard because, like, when I looked at that game originally, I thought it was going to be like a like a toned down Sekiro, and now they're like, nah, it's going to be hard. No, I'm I'm excited because fucking it's Samurai got a lot cool. of one hit kills, yeah. so you can get one hit. I think it has difficulty levels though, so you can drop the difficulty down if you don't want to play. I'm the just game glad it's way, not but... a hack and slash because that's that's not what the Samurai is about. No, it looked very like controlled counter. You know, Very like, pretty they're game. like, oh no, you if you mess up, you will get fucked up and die. It's like, oh, that's crazy fun. to think we're gonna like so. have the PS5 in a few months. Yeah, that was supposed to be. They were going to do a uh, presentation today, and yeah. that got pushed. So I think there's last time I checked, there's still a bunch of game stuff scheduled for Saturday, like three different presentations of like a bunch of different like smaller studio stuff. Mm-hmm. So there might be some next gen stuff coming out of that on Saturday. So if you're listening to this tomorrow, to what which will be Friday, uh, yeah, keep your eye open for that. As long as that doesn't get pushed too, there were three different presentations. I think they're all spaced out. I think they coordinated. I just still want to see what the thing fucking looks like. I think everybody does at this point. What is this box? Gonna I hope be? it's that yeah, weird like V shaped thing that was going around. I hope that's it. Yeah, that's the dev kit. The dev kit's oh, I crazy hope, looking. I hope that's, like, what it actually is, though. Just <laughs> if they big, just didn't change I the, the would beat dev kit. I love it. If it's that fucking weird-ass, like, it's got, like, a drink holder in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Do not put your drink there. <laughs> or like if the you want to warm up your coffee, you put it there. It, it looks like a giant... It, it is a giant V that is all fans. Yeah, it's just a giant fan. <laughs> yeah, and then there's yeah. a little debug screen on the front. I love it. Yeah. I'm not crazy about the new controller design. I mean, I I haven't tried it yet. I don't know how it feels, but I I think I like the DualShock 4 so much that anything else I'm just not going to like as much. Like, this is my Xbox 360 controller. I didn't think that controller would ever be beat, but I think the DualShock 4 has, has overtaken it. It's fine, but the way that they have the, uh, the analog stick switch is not changing on the new one. Uh, hurt my thumbs after a while, but I don't I know bought why that is. So maybe the new grips, finger positioning. I bought grips that. for mine, and that like it made it feel a lot better. It'll be interesting to see how that works. I know people were already not happy because there's a like the light bar has been moved from the front to around the touch screen. <laughs> I mean the touch touch panel. I yeah, say so make the entire thing face. light up. Bring it on! Yeah. Give me a fucking giant LED <laughs> controller. Let's go. I want my hands to oh, like glow. Those, People... Like those old Mad Cats controllers yeah. <laughs> where they had little lights in the clear plastic. Oh, those so the sucked, thing but they would... looked cool. <laughs> I used to have one of the ones that had the lights, and it had the fans built into the grips, so it'd blow air onto your hands so that you was wouldn't, like, like, sweat. the controller that you'd give to your friend when they came over to play, and you'd play with a normal one. Yeah, and the <laughs> fan, our fans on ours broke after, like, a week. Of course, because it's a Mad Cats controller. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought it was a cool idea in concept. I was like, oh, yeah, a little fan, so you turn it on, and if you have, like, sweaty palms, it will, like, dry it out a little bit, which is kind of nice. But, yeah, those fans broke, like, instantly. Yep. <laughs> good idea. That's dumb. Poor execution. The only good I, controllers that's... Mad Cats managed to make were their arcade sticks when they still did 
arcade sticks, which they stopped making those a long time ago. Even the Rock Band controllers suck. Those were made by Mad Cats. Yeah. Yeah. So flimsy. Everything they make. I'm calling you out, Mad Cats. I know you're listening. <laughs> 500 years too late, but, you know. <laughs> Somebody's got to put their foot down. You've gone <laughs> oh. on too far. You know far. what? I'm going to take a stand. <laughs> You know, uh, speaking of video games, I made a terrible mistake and bought Caitlyn Animal Crossing. Oh, God. Ooh. And uh, wow. So you forfeit she's put your in, girlfriend or wife now. Yeah, I think she's put in 150 hours in yep. a month. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's about how much time Emily and I have on our island. You guys share an island? You have to. Unless you have two Switches. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really fucked up. They, Nintendo, that's screwed up. Yeah, because that that would be fine if they gave like the second person like all the control, but they don't give them any control. Mm. Yeah, that part has been regrettable. So yeah, like since uh, DJ essentially how it works, since Emily started playing first, she has the ability to decide where bridges go or where housing developments will go for people to buy homes and. She's the, I guess, I think the game calls her, like, the community representative. So whoever plays it first becomes a community representative. And they get to make all those decisions and stuff. The second person doesn't at all. So they can contribute money towards those causes, but they can't really do anything about it. So you're basically kind of stuck just improving your own house and maybe, like, planting trees and moving some things around that aren't official in-game. But any official in-game playing stuff uh the second player and anyone after the first player essentially is just fucked um this just in uh the grill collective event has been postponed a week to delay till the june 13th through 15th so that's not happening this weekend i don't know about the other two things that were supposed to happen so what the what now? Video video game announcements. Uh, one of the okay. one of the events was called the Gorilla Collective. They were supposed to show off a bunch of stuff. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. I can't remember what stuff, but they had a lot of publishers that were going to show stuff. Now, uh, DJ, I was talking to Becca, and. Uh, she said that you guys might watch Avatar if you don't end up watching Brotherhood. Oh, she just watched all of Avatar again. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I watched a couple episodes with her. Like in the past two weeks? She yeah, she watched them? the entire thing like and finished a couple days ago again. I don't know how she fucking got... I, I, I think that I thought that show was a lot longer than it actually is. Yeah, I thought so too, but it's not that long. It's only three seasons. Yeah, 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 but I like Toph a lot. She's funny. Toph is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, before this quarantine happened, uh, I was watching it on weekends with some friends, and we got like through part of the final season. But I've been on hiatus for that since then, and I don't want to just you know watch it on Netflix because you know we had a thing going. Yeah, 61 episodes. Yeah, it's you not know, bad it's, at all. It's a fair I'd, amount. I'd yeah. probably rather watch Full Metal. Hey, I mean, you should watch both. both I good, should. But, but, I mean, one of them has been on my list month. for significantly longer <laughs> and would make right. several people I know very happy if I were to watch <laughs> it. Yeah, I would say watch them both. Definitely. Um, the I think uh, Av Avatar just had a new new quote unquote Blu-ray set come out. That's really just a nice like steel book. Mm, nice. I don't think the there's any remastering done to the show since it you would still be watching it in four three. But uh, yeah, de I mean, for sure, I was really late to the train on that too. But it's worth it. Yeah, I'll watch it it's eventually. Good. Zuko's the best. And Toph, especially Toph. She's I was so like funny. Yeah, they're both great. I'm definitely looking forward to hopefully eventually finally finishing it. Yeah. 
It's getting really hot in this room I'm sitting in. <laughs> Why are my windows closed? My air conditioner's yes. on full blast, as it has been for the last three months, because Texas is yeah. insane. I was just about to say, you're in Texas, however many years My air conditioner is literally always on. Yeah. It sucks because, like, this is the part of the year where they start raising the electricity prices. And I, like, just had to renew my contract. And so... That's fucking Oh, yeah, it's rough. But, yeah. Solar panels. Oh, you rent your place, though. Yeah, it's... I, I rent the place. The, uh, the lights in my room have this cool feature where if I have the air conditioner on in the bedroom, uh, they just, like, uh, flicker and dim constantly. <laughs> it's good, good power. <laughs> something clean. Yeah. Re- something, something. Real clean electricity. Yep. So that's extremely uh, distracting. <laughs> Does anyone else want to talk about anything? Or maybe we can jump to some, if we have any recommendations. Let me pull up Right Stuff yeah. and get ready for this. Rightstuff.com. Yeah. I just fucking cleared my internet history and all the cookies and shit for the first time in like a year. And so I didn't even recognize Right Stuff. Oh, did you have like a cash version from so long ago that it just... It looks entirely different from the site makeup now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like everything has changed. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, really? Wow! Wow! Um, so I'm gonna say uh, I recommend Mob Psycho 100 2. That is coming out with a limited edition and a standard edition, um, and it's Funimation, so the limited edition is still pretty reasonably priced. Uh, also, One Piece Season 10, Voyage 1. This wow. is significant because it's the first One Piece release in over two years. Uh, it's still fucking DVD only, though. And, uh, this is material that got a Blu-ray release in Japan and is from 2012, so they're way, way behind, um, but still recent enough that it should be on Blu-ray and it's not. So that all yeah, sucks a lot. Yeah, I wonder why they decided not to do that. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I guess they couldn't get the rights for some reason, but it seemed like if there was anything that was going to delay it two years when they were already six to eight years behind, uh, it would have been getting the Blu-ray rights. But nope, they still didn't get them. So that sucks. Christ. Huh. Hmm. But hmm. if you're buying One Piece... You finally get the next voyage after two years. So check that out. I, I'm going to recommend buying the Promare Steel Book, which is on I'm sale on Right buying Stuff. The Promare Promare Collector's Edition. Oh, I just so went with the Steel Book. The Steel Book looks cool and it's on sale. Granted, it's out of stock, but they're expecting more. So I imagine that you just lock in your price if you buy it now. I mean, I would recommend yeah. just buying Promare in any way, shape, or form you can. But the Steel Book is dope. So I would say go out and buy that uh, to watch, especially if you have like a, a like a nice television setup. It's not like 4K HDR or anything, but it's still got all the colors in the rainbow. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, G Kids Steelbooks uh, versus Collector's Editions are rough because the Steelbooks look so much better, but the Collector's Editions have shit that I can't pass up. So like for Promare. I had the steel book ordered, and then they announced the collector's edition, so I canceled it. But it looks so much better. I just I need to get the collector's edition for the soundtrack and the book and shit. And they're doing the same thing these... for weathering with you. I wonder if all these steel books will eventually turn into what the Halo Two collector's edition steel book looked like, just like covered in rust eventually, which was badass for the Halo Two things. But <sighs> I don't know if I would want my Promare steel book to look like it was through eighty thunderstorms by the time. It's like five years old. I'm hoping all my steel books keep their integrity. I think I've had some for a few years, and they all look pretty good. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of it depends on the atmosphere you you know keep it in as well. But there's just so many of those Halo Two steel books that are just tetanus city. <laughs> oh yeah, the collector's edition. He has got the poster and an art booklet and the CD and all that. Oh, and a sticker. That's the big seller. <laughs> I uh, 
I ordered something from Amazon uh, a few months ago, and a damaged copy came because, you know, they can't fucking package anything. You have a lot of problems with Amazon. I do, yeah. With no padding. Um, I might have already told the story. Uh, And so I sent it back for replacement, and the replacement was packaged the exact same way, except it had a Space Jam sticker on the cover. Fuck yeah. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Um, I have... Uh, my only recommendation is the Rimuru uh, plushie is back in uh, stock at Right Stuff. They uh, made more of them because they were so popular. They are a top seller. Um, the only review on it is that somebody said it's definitely worth the price. It is the most realistic Rimuru you could get for your money. I feel like it's not anything like Rimuru because it's a plushie, not the slime. Yeah, he would probably so be cold it in and Vaseline sticky. or something. <laughs> yeah, coat it in exactly. KY jelly like the aliens. Um, my only recommendation is Weathering with You. Uh, pre-orders are open. I don't think they're open for the Steelbook version yet. Um, no, but the normal one is available for pre-order, and apparently Allison Brie is in it. That's yeah. weird. Uh. So I'm guessing you didn't watch the dub. I didn't watch the dub, no. So something that kind of pisses me off about at least the cover of the standard edition of that um, is that, you know, it's a a good, solid NYAV post-dub. But they switch to some more celebrity actors (sighs) for some of the supporting characters in particular. And what really makes me upset is that on the cover, they put these celebrity actors' names on it, even though they're not the lead actors. Oh, you're fucking kidding. The the two lead actors are not mentioned on the cover. That is bullshit. (laughs) That's so dumb. So I wish G-Kids would not do that. Um, I'm hoping at least those names won't be on the Steelbook. Hopefully not the Collector's Edition either, which is also something they they announced would exist. I'm offended by this. Yeah, I'm kind of offended by that as well. That's the d- division between the creative department and the marketing yep. department. Uh, it's, it's so like, shitty. You, you know creative's probably going, don't do this, and mm-hmm. marketing's like, nope. We ro- we're, we're the ones making money. That's dumb. Well, the Japanese version's phenomenal anyway, so... you And I mean, the uh, dub is still yeah. great. It's still a great NYAV post-dub by Michael and Stephanie. They're very so good at what they do. watch it. Yeah, watch it however yeah, it you very, want. I watched Just the don't dub watch version. it for fucking Alison Brie, apparently. Right. Who the hell did she... I don't even know who that is, and I don't know who she played in that, and I saw the dub version. She played Natsumi. I figured. If I had to guess. Lee, Lee, yeah. And Lee Pace is also a famous actor, I guess. Um, but I can't remember any of the characters' names, so I guess that doesn't really matter. Yeah, and Riz Ahmed, who plays, like, a kind of minor character in the movie, um, but he's on the fucking cover. What is he like? like one of the detectives or some shit? He is. Yep. One of, the <laughs> of course. See, is he the lead detective or is he like the other detective? He's the lead detective's partner. Wow, what a role! <laughs> he deserves his spot on the cover. Like three <laughs> lines in the entire movie, or something. Roughly. Yeah, uh, that movie's really good though, and I've got a full color Hina sweater now, so. I'm repping it. Oh, my favorite thing was the uh, correction from the director. Uh, he had posted it online. So, like, yeah, we touched it up a little bit, but I, I did something very important. I forgot clouds in this last pivotal <laughs> scene, and I added clouds in. And it was so fucking what funny a fucking to read that. Wonderful man. <laughs> I love how Shinkai is just constantly like, guys, my he is the sucks. most stop getting so humble excited about person it. in the world. <laughs> Like, he gave lectures uh, going through your name and all the things that are wrong with it and all the things he could have done better if he had more time or the things that Miyazaki would have done Yeah, he had that, like, one tangent that he went on about why he didn't want Miyazaki to watch his movie because he'd see all the problems. Like, what a guy. (laughs) Sensei will be mad at me. I know he doesn't work for Miyazaki, but it reminds me of, like, fucking devil wears prada shit where it's like don't let meryl streep see what you're wearing even if it's like six thousand dollars because she will destroy you 
even though I don't think that's how it would happen. I mean, I think Miyazaki would watch it and then just scowl and leave the room. I feel like that's and Miyazaki's that'd be a, reaction that'd be a positive to review. everything in the world. Absolutely. 100%. There's a, there's a little documentary short film. Uh, it's like 45 minutes-ish. Um, that came out a few years ago called Never Ending Man, Hayao Miyazaki. Um, and uh, it mostly just follows him being a grumpy old man and uh, everyone talking about how he just like destroys young people that he works with. And uh, it has a scene of him making the president of Katakawa weep like a little baby because he tried to show Miyazaki... Um, uh, some new, like, AI-generated CG animation that he was super proud of, and Miyazaki was like, this is an insult to humanity. And he's like, such a fucking dick. <laughs> yeah, he's why would Why would he, why would, that, why would that guy even go to him? He must why have known. Why does anyone talk like, to that know man? What that's gonna go- <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, everyone wants Miyazaki's He'll approval. He'll never give it to anyone. <laughs> The only one he gives it to is Anno, which is bizarre, because I feel like there's a lot of things in Evangelion that Miyazaki would not be a big fan of. Yeah, that's the weirdest thing. It's like, why? What? Why? Why? He, he just loves Anno for fucking animating the shit out of those Nausicaa scenes in 1984. I guess that's it. He must have made an amazing impression back then on him. He also knows how much it bothers people. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> probably. That's probably the real reason. He just wants to stick it to his fucking son. <laughs> oh, God. Poor Goro. Yes, I was an absentee father. My son still shit. Yeah, his movie still suck, though. <laughs> it's like, I'm a terrible parent. Don't be like me. Also, my son's movie's still crap. <laughs> I guess on that note, uh, if you have HBO Max, watch a bunch of Ghibli movies. Because they're good, and Miyazaki's a great artist, just a bad person. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he... I mean, I remember, speaking of uh, Wynne Jones, she was not super thrilled with the changes he made to the story for Howl's Moving Castle, but... Yeah. What are you gonna do? (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's like, uh, uh... Well, I I think it was the Kiki's author who was actually angry. About the changes made for the film. Because Miyazaki likes to shoehorn in, uh, like, anti-war messages. <laughs> Even if the original narrative didn't have them there. He whatsoever. would shoehorn in anti-war messages if he just had to animate and direct a toothpaste commercial. <laughs> you say this like it's a bad thing. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing. It's just funny. It's like, this was not the original material whatsoever. Uh <sighs> Yeah, man, he's, uh, he's enhancing it. I don't know. Well, I'm out of things to recommend. Well, then I think it's uh, time to say goodbye for the evening. Uh, Kestrel, where can you find us? You can find us anywhere you find podcasts. Subscribe, rate, and review. iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Google Podcasts. Uh, we're on YouTube now. Chris put us on YouTube. Um, oh, God. Are I comments mean, disabled? <laughs> He's I, telling me. I don't know if anyone's even watching. I don't think anybody knows where that is. Uh, it's on, like, Chris's YouTube channel. It's on, oh. have a YouTube channel. Uh, well, he'll handle it then. <laughs> Whatever. And literally any feedback would be welcome. Um, yeah. We have a Alexa app, or Skill, um... We're on iHeartRadio, we are on Spotify and SoundCloud and Stitcher, and you can uh, give us feedback, Twitter and Facebook, follow us there, share our stuff, um, Phantom Post Radio for all that, you can find us on phantompost.com and email us at phantompostradio at gmail.com, and you can find me on Twitter at Full Metal Kilma. You can find me on Twitter at DJ No Style, and uh, also go download my game Lessons in Love on Itchio. You can just type in Lessons in Love game, and it'll come up on Google. Um, you can find me on Twitter at SonicBug. I'm mostly posting uh, dumb shit I find from other people, and my own reviews on Fridays. 
And I'm right here. Kane is still exclusive to us and us only. Yeah, boy. Um, yes, please send us some feedback because we would appreciate it. Uh, tell us what you'd like to hear for topics, um, and we will add them to a very long list of topics that we almost never actually address. Um, but uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, contact us. Send us a wave. Let us know you're still alive out there as the world burns down around us. And uh, thanks for listening, and uh, tune in next time to Phantom Post Radio. Adios! Yeah.